So let's start talking about demand as a separate concept. And to begin to describe demand, I'm actually going to start with the definition of it. So demand is basically the quantity of a good or service a consumer is willing to consume at a given price. So notice that demand, you're looking from the consumer's point of view or the consumer's perspective versus supply, as you'll see, is going to be from the producer's point of view or from the producer's perspective. So demand is from a consumer's point of view. So let's say that you're a consumer and you're looking at these pair of shoes that you really want and they cost $150 right now. And so you haven't bought them yet, but you're right on the edge of buying them. That price, $150, has you on the edge, you're thinking about it, maybe not, you really want these shoes, but you're not fully set on this price yet, you haven't purchased yet, but you're very close to purchasing. Well, what would happen if these shoes go on sale for $50? Well, you are right, you are very close to purchasing at 150, you really want these shoes, so if they go down to $50, you're definitely going to buy them. But what if the price increased on the other hand? Let's say these shoes went up to $250. Well, you were just about to buy them at $150, but you weren't fully sure yet. So if they increased to $250, well, if you weren't fully sure at $150, you were close, but not fully sure. If they go to $250, then you're definitely not going to buy them. And from that example, we can introduce something called the law of demand. And basically what this concept states that in general, if the price of a good or service increases, like those shoes increasing to $250, then the demand for that good or service is going to decrease. You're not as willing to buy the shoes. If the price of a good or service decreases, so if those shoes go to $50, then your demand for that respective good or service increases, then you're more willing to buy the shoes. Now, what's important about this law of demand here is that I stated in general, because sometimes this isn't going to hold. As you'll see when we talk about stuff like normal goods or inferior goods, when we get into talking about elasticity, sometimes what's gonna happen is that if the price of a good or service increases, then the demand can sometimes increase. A little counterintuitive, but what happens is that if the price goes up for something, sometimes people may view it as higher quality, and so the demand for it can increase. And then vice versa, if the price of a good or service sometimes decreases, people may see it as inferior quality and so the demand would decrease. So there are cases where this doesn't hold, but for the majority of goods and services, this law here holds. So we'll just assume that uh, it holds for all goods and services for now, but just wanted to give that heads up that it's not always, there are cases where it doesn't hold. So it's not fully set in stone all the time. Now we can actually take the law of demand and we can visually show it. So let's say that we have a graph here and we have the price of a good or service. And then over here on the x-axis, we have the quantity demanded of that same good or service. I'll just write quantity demanded. So notice that if the price goes up, the demand goes down. And if the price goes down, then the demand goes up. So there's an inverse relationship. So you're gonna see the relationship looking like that, right? So as the price goes up, the quantity demanded goes down. And then vice versa, as the price goes down, the quantity demanded is gonna go up. Now, in reality, usually it's not represented with a line like this. It's usually going to be more of a curve. So 
bringing in a more realistic example, um, bringing in this table here where we have the price of a good or service and we're looking at an individual consumer. So with these different prices here, the quantity that that consumer is willing to buy or consume is given here with those respective prices. So at a price of $1, the quantity demanded is 12. At a price of $2, the quantity demanded is eight. So that's gonna be like here. At a price of three, the quantity demanded is gonna be five. So that would be like here. And then at a price of uh, four, the quantity demanded is gonna be three. And then at a price of five, the quantity demanded is gonna be two. So notice if we connect these, let me bring this down a little bit more supposed to look like a curve. So perhaps maybe my drawing won't be the best. But usually you got a price, you got quantity demanded. You're usually gonna see it look more like a curve like that. And this here, it's called a demand curve. Some textbooks will show it as a line just for simplicity. But usually in reality, it's going to be more of a curve. Now, we can look at the demand curve on different scales. So I just mentioned that this was from the perspective of one consumer. But what if we were looking at the whole market, at a whole market, some kind of market? Well, instead of 12, this might be 12,000. This might be 8,000. This might be 5,000. So you could look at a group of consumers as well. So maybe this quantity demanded could be in thousands. Right, so sometimes you could be looking at one consumer or you could be looking at a bunch of consumers, maybe in a whole market. And so something like this would be called the market demand. So you can look at it from different scales and then this would be the market demand now, what we're going to cover in the next couple of videos is how demand can be affected by certain factors. And the two ways that demand can be affected, this is pretty critical and sometimes a source of confusion, is number one, there could be a change in quantity demanded. And then another way is that there could just be a change in demand. So you're most likely going to see these two expressions come up. And they sound similar, but they're not. So a change in quantity demanded, and there could be a change in just overall demand. And to show you visually how it works, so we got quantity demanded, and then we got the price. And then we got a curve like that. The change in quantity demanded is basically movement along the curve. Okay, so it's going from one point to another or to another, right? Whether we're going from here to here or here to here, it's movement along the curve. And there's only one factor that affects movement along the curve, that change in quantity demanded, and that one factor is price. All right, so we're gonna have a separate video talking about change in quantity demanded, movement along the curve. We're gonna dig in deeper of why that happens. While a change in demand is a shift of the entire curve. So that means that we take this curve and we shift it this way, or it could shift the other way. So notice that if the entire curve shifts, notice that the quantity demanded is changing because at this price, we had this quantity. Let's say at price one, we had Q1. 
Well, if the demand curve shifts, the whole curve shifts, then now at this price, we have this new quantity. Right, so there's a change in demand, but just the expressions, the way they're described is different. So change in quantity demanded is movement along the curve, while a change in demand is the shift of the entire curve. Now, over here we said that change in quantity demanded or movement along the curve from one point to the next, there's only one factor and it's price. Well, as we're gonna see a shift of the entire curve or the change in demand, there's gonna be multiple factors that we're gonna talk about. I'm not gonna mention them here, but we're gonna have a video talking about all those different multiple factors that could shift the entire curve either left or right. Another way to differentiate these two is that change in quantity demanded, what you're looking at is single points, right? At this point, we got this price, we got this quantity. At this point, we got this price, this quantity. So change of quantity demanded, you're looking at single points and the change in single points. Okay, so going from one point to the next. Versus a change in demand, you're looking at the range of points. Notice that if you shift the entire curve, all of these points are gonna change. Right, so you're not just looking at a change in a single point from here to here, or here to there. You're looking at the change in a range of points. So that's another perspective or another way to differentiate these two. And so what we're gonna do in the next couple of videos is basically look at both of these, the change in quantity demanded and the change in demand separately.